Hi Camp Chef Pellet Grill users. Today I'm going to show you how I installed an internal light in my Smoke Pro ZG. The first thing after selecting a switch that I needed to do was figure out placement of the switch. Right next to my Rectech controller seemed perfect. I knew I was going to step up the size of the holes, but first I needed to use a small drill bit to make a pilot hole. The switch manufacturer's website said that the outer diameter should be a three quarters of an inch. Not being the trusting type, I decided to break out my calipers, and as you can see, it was a little bit larger. So I figured I would drill to three quarters of an inch, and I would use a file if I needed to to step it up after that. It's probably a good thing that I was going to use a file anyway, because these burrs probably wouldn't be too kind to the wiring. Before filing the hole, I realized I was going to have to cut a notch for the alignment tab on the side of the switch. The alignment tab keeps it from rotating, which is a good thing. Unfortunately, I have the switch upside down right here, and I'll have to fix that in a little bit. The harness plugging into my Rectech controller has a blue wire for hot. So to keep things simple, I decided to use blue wire here. I found these great connectors on Amazon called T-Splice connectors. They bite right through the insulation of the wire and allow you to plug directly into it. This end of my wire has a male connection, and the side that plugs into the switch is a female. Now, I swear I love my Camp Chef pellet grill. But this is a Rectech Bowl internal light assembly. The assembly comes with everything you need, except for the correct type of terminals. So these will have to be cut off. These wires are high temperature grade, but they're a little bit short, so try to leave as much as possible. On one of the wires, you're going to want to crimp on a female connection to plug into the male connection of the switch here. For the neutral side, I pulled out a length of white wire to plug into the white wire of the Rectech harness. I figured a lot of people know how to crimp these type of terminals to wires, so I didn't record a lot of that. But if you need to reference something, here's me making up the white neutral wire. And it doesn't matter if it's a white wire, or a blue wire, or male or female, they're all the same. The yellow terminals are meant for a slightly larger gauge wire, but to make it simple on myself, I decided to go with yellow instead of blue so that I knew which connection was which. And after giving it a tug test, it seems to work just fine. Just like with the blue wire, I used a T-splice connector to connect to the neutral of the Rectech harness. Since I had experience putting the blue one on, I knew this one would go on perfect the first time. Damn it! I'm not sure if that was because of the wire gauge, but eventually it did click into place, so just make sure you examine it before you walk away. Not exactly sure why I thought 11 p.m. was a good time to start this project, but I started to get a little impatient, so I crimped on the remaining connectors. Figured I'd just give it a try before I made any more holes in my grill. Everything looks good here. Well, here's the moment of truth. Success! 
Well, now it's the next morning and I decided I needed to tackle my next big hurdle. How to route the wires through the side of the pellet grill. Originally I hoped to use the same holes as the RTD, but the terminals were too big to fit through there and I wasn't going to cut them off at this point and do this over again, so I decided I would just drill another hole next to the one for the RTD. At this point I knew where the wires were going to go, but not exactly where I was going to put the light. As I said earlier, the wires aren't very long, so they'd have to be close enough to the side, but as close to the middle as possible for maximum efficiency. Right here seemed about right. I dug around in my bin of random screws and nuts and came up with these. I wanted the light to be as secure as possible, so I started with my smallest drill bit and worked my way up till I was just under the diameter of the screw. That way I could tap some threads. Using a spare screw, I was able to tap the hole the way I wanted to. The screw did not survive. Luckily I had a lot of spares, and using a regular screwdriver, this one went in perfectly. That actually worked out perfectly. I guess there's a first time for everything. One hole down, one to go. The back hole happened to be right at the bend in the top of the grill. So I had to bend this washer with some pliers to get it to fit. Wow, that worked perfect the first time too. I'm on a roll. Length seemed to be just about perfect to ride right under the lid and drop straight down. So I marked where I was going to drill and just went for it. I drilled a hole next to the RTD and directly under it up through the first part of the hopper, but not to where the pellets are. The scratches from the drill filled in pretty quickly after a few cooks. And that bend you saw wasn't nearly as bad looking in person as it looks on film, but I straightened it out with a pair of pliers pretty easy. I filled the holes later on with some high temperature RTV to protect the wires and to prevent any heat loss. Next I just pushed the wires through the holes and down next to the hopper. Again, it, your hole should not go all the way through to where the pellets are. Now I'm fishing the yellow male connector wire through the hopper and 
crossing my fingers, hoping everything was long enough. To my relief, everything was the perfect length and connected together without any issue. Even the T-splice connectors stay together. Now I just have to do the same with the other wire with the blue female connector. And this is the one that will plug into the other end of the switch. And once plugged in, we'll have made all of our electrical connections and we'll be ready to push it into place. I even got it in the correct orientation this time. Now that all the electrical connections are made and the switch is pushed into place, it's time to tuck the wires in. And tucking the wires in, make sure to avoid any of the fan blades in there. I always aim for the back left corner as it seems to have the most space away from the fans. At this point, electrically, I know the wiring is sound and it should work. But this is actually the very first time I'm going to try turning on the light. Fingers crossed. All right. Now it's time for a trial run. Here's a good example of how the Rectech wipe pellet PID controller operates. The fan will cycle on and off and the pellet feed rate will change in order to maintain a very accurate temperature. Time to check the meat and see if the slight still works at temperature. I guess that doesn't look so great in the daylight. Let's check it at night. Still works three hours later. Thanks for watching, everyone.